Hi, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to share the online adaptation of a project titled Curing Ocean Plastic in Pandemic Times. This project is a collaboration between National University and the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in San Diego, California. I wanted to start with presenting my university. National University is a veteran-funded, non-profit, non-traditional university in California. We are non-traditional for two reasons. One is our student body. We have a high proportion of minority students, and in fact, we are a Hispanic-serving institution. We also have many older working adults, active military, and veteran students. The other reason is our schedule. Courses are taken one at a time in an accelerated time frame, one course per month. If it's a lecture and lab, they are considered two courses and run for eight weeks. Most students taking biology have health careers such as nursing in mind. So our original goal was to increase our students' success in STEM disciplines from enrollment to graduation. And CURES, course-based undergraduate research, are a known successful approach for that. Our CURE is based on a project that studies microbial colonization of floating plastic in coastal waters. A quick background. <clears throat> in 2010, the Sea Education Association, or C, conducted an expedition in the North Atlantic where they quantified the number of microplastic particles in the ocean. This expedition resulted in a trove of scientific data. The article by Zettler et al. coined the term plastisphere and also in a great documentary called Into the Gyra. One of the participants in the expedition, microbiologist Emilio de Forcin, wanted to explore the early stages of microbial colonization, and that's how our project started. The core of the research is to use floating plastic types, submerge them in coastal waters, and then study the microbial population using both microbial culture and metagenomics. Later, we teamed up with Jeff Bowman's group at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, which brought a consistent incubation site and access to much more advantage technology and know-how. So in 2018, we were awarded an NSF grant to establish a cure leveraging the strengths of these two very different institutions. The cure was to be used in multiple courses at national, from non-majors to upper division majors courses. And um, scripts, besides providing the site of um, the um, incubation, we also had a, an active participation of graduate students and postdocs from Jeff's lab. So these are the elements of the original cure. The modular design allows flexibility of adoption from very simple techniques such as swabbing plates and observing colonies all the way to bioinformatics analysis. The centerpiece was always a field trip to Scripps where multiple activities took place, including interaction between Scripps personnel and students. The cure is assessed via retrospective surveys and focus groups. <clears throat> And we are also to monitor over time student success reflected as retention and graduation. So with the Levato Cure, we were humming along contentedly with great results until March 2020 and the COVID pandemic. As everybody else, on-site classes and field trips closed down. So we decided to make lemonade out of the lemons and adapt the Cure to an online delivery. The slide shows a comparison of on-site and online design for non-majors general biology lab. We always have students watch the Into the Gyra documentary before getting to the project. <clears throat> the main difference was that instead of giving the students all the information in one day, as he used to do on the day of the field trip, the material was provided a week before, and it was included assessing the weekly quiz. We also have a real simple collection deployment event during the course, and we share pictures and video of what's going on refer students to social media accounts and post things on a Padlet. I will show it in a moment. Then, instead of a panel at Scripps, we do a Zoom Q&A session with a range of panelists from professors to undergraduate student researchers. The slides show some of the content that was posted in the course LMS, the documentary, recorded lectures, pictures and videos from the field trip, and the recording of the Q&A for those who cannot attend. And this is the Padlet. We use it as a combination bulletin board, introductions, additional information, and a place for student questions and feedback before and after the Q&A. So here are the survey results from the first try last November. There are 15 questions, and I have color-coded them by the topic, as you can see to the right. Students are asked to rate their knowledge or appreciation of the issue before and after the experience. Before is in black and after in red. 
The after response scores were significantly higher for all the questions for both on-site and online students. We also saw that online students rated their before knowledge significantly lower compared to the on-site students. However, there was no difference in the after scores between online and on-site students. And here I'm just quickly showing the survey questions. If you are interested, the PowerPoint has been uploaded. So if we want to look at where the highest gains were, that including the questions related to the scripts research, plastic research, laboratory skills, which is actually pretty cool for an online course, and something that warms my heart, appreciation of science. You can see how high those scores are after the experience. <clears throat> So here are our conclusions based on the pilot and the recent second pilot. Online seemed to have the same impact as the on-site field trip based on survey scores. We have no hard data for this, but students really seemed prepared and engaged by the time we got to the Q&A session. We think this may be due to the scaffolded delivery of information, something that we can absolutely do when we return to on-site. The numbers, well, online we can reach many more students and they don't have to be in San Diego to participate. You also saw many more students signing up for focus groups, something we struggled before. We are still analyzing the focus group interview data, but there was a sense of deep appreciation and impact from the experience. That said, most students expressed that if possible, they would have loved to do this in person. And um, it takes a village, so I wanted to acknowledge the group of wonderful people who made this possible. My co-PI, Rachel Simmons, script professor, Jeff Bowman, natural Emilio de Force, our external evaluator, Kurt Stuck, as well as a number of undergraduate and graduate students and postdocs. Last but not least, NSF for providing the funding for this project. Thank you.